So one of my coolest moments in science at Yale is definitely came from a class called Perspectives on Science and Engineering. Um, so it's a class where a series of professors who are doing research at Yale come and present their work. It was in a class about 20 and it was a discussion section and our discussion leader was a guy named Michael Frame. Uh, who's a professor here at Yale who is absolutely brilliant. Uh, he's a math professor and he was uh, Mandelbrot's pupil, pupil when he was at Yale and uh, the guy is so profound in everything he says. Uh, he's very quiet but when he says something at, like the whole room is silent and they're listening because he has some a power to his voice and uh, we were talking about uh, some of the potential harms of genetically engineered organisms and uh, he recited the last page of a book called The First Three Minutes. It's a book about the Big Bang. And he recited the last page of it to explain like why mankind is always tending towards uh, advancement and why we're always trying to further understand the world around us. And he recited it from memory. And it was uh, one of the most incredible things I've ever seen at Yale, just to have this guy who is so influential in the mathematics community and just sitting here with 20 undergraduates talking about uh, this incredible quote that he remembers from a book. Uh, I thought that was a really cool experience. Uh, Bulldogs Racing is a, a club on campus where um, we're essentially trying to build a formula style uh, race car for a competition in New Hampshire at the end of the year. Making a car and coming to the competition is uh, actually a large part of the challenge. 2013, last year, was the first year where in, I believe, about four year period where we actually had raced. So nobody on the team last year had been part of a previous race where the car was actually working. We ended up doing very well. We, we got the fastest time of the day in acceleration, uh, which is sort of the first event. Uh, we got the fastest time of the day in autocross, which is the second event. And we ended up having the fastest time for the endurance race um, while also having the most efficient car. So we essentially swept the competition. Um, it was really fun to, to be able to do that because we got first place in, in almost every category. Um, so it was, it was pretty nice. The Yale Science Magazine was something that um, I started as a writer. The first article I ever was assigned was on bulk metallic glass, which is a really cool material. It's kind of a mix of a plastic and a metal. And a professor, um, Dr. Shores, was working on it here in the engineering school. And um, surprisingly, he just let me interview him, and which is, at the time, I just thought it was normal because I was signed this article, I said, contact this guy, but I mean, he just sold his bulk metallic glass to Apple for millions of dollars. He's now very much a celebrity figure, and it's so crazy to me that my freshman year, I was able to get across the table from him and just ask him about his research. What was his day-to-day -day life like? How did he come up with this? What were his next milestones that he was trying to, um, trying to do research for? So it, it definitely was a good way to kind of break into the science scene. And I mean, after meeting with him and seeing the cool engineering research that was going on, it definitely pushed me towards the engineering tracks. I guess I started out as a freshman um, knowing that engineering was going to be in my future. Then second semester, I got involved with the uh, Yale Undergraduate Aerospace Association. And they had some really high expectations and really high dreams of sending a high altitude weather balloon into space. After we had done a whole bunch of tests and actually sent a balloon up that we couldn't recover because we couldn't, we couldn't find it in the transmission system and failed, um, when we sat down and redesigned the system um, very thoroughly, looked over all the electronics, and then we did that second launch, which just worked beautifully with all the transmission system, even landed in a tree, and then we were able to remotely get it to come down. Um, the minute we sort of huddled around a laptop computer, um, somewhere in the middle of Connecticut at a gas station, there was a hundred or two hundred pictures from space, and we just knew that not only you know had the design worked really well, and that we had sort of completely successful tracking through the whole time, um, we'd also accomplished the mission. It was just magnificent to see those pictures and know that it was something that we had just completely conceived on our own, um, and we hadn't given up when we thought that that first project that we had done um, could have been the end. Aerospace, by definition, is a high-risk sort of you know, area because you work for a semester on a project and you have very little return, you just keep building something and you don't have a good idea whether it's going to work or not. You trust, you, know, you do everything you can to make it work, but then you just send it and it just goes. And you have to trust you know, yourself and your teammates that it will come back. And that applies to anything, a rocket, a quadcopter, a plane, a balloon, 
And it's really fulfilling to see this sort of craft come down and be it the balloon that came down and um, gave us those amazing pictures of space. And I think those moments are definitely the most fulfilling.